All right. Hi, friends. It's your commissioner speaking. Rolling solo today. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, Gen 3 OU, also known as ADV, uh, which is the format we are going to be playing for Season 10. Uh, please make sure that you read over the rules document. Make sure you kind of understand everything. Uh, in this little podcast, I'm going to kind of talk about uh, what the OU meta actually looks like, uh, who are some of the big uh, standout Pokemon, and just like some general things that might be different than what we're used to in modern gens, and even as a as former gens as much as um, DPP. So, first, I want to talk about our pal Tyranitar, uh, who is the king of Generation 3. Uh, with his ridiculous stat spread and his insane move pool, he kind of uh, dictates the pace of the tier. So, with Sandstream, it is a permanent sandstorm. And Tyranitar is the only permanent weather setter in OU. So once the sand is up, it stays up. So a lot of Pokemon that take damage from Sandstorm are already at a disadvantage at all times. Now, Tyranitar finds himself in a very unique situation in the metagame, uh, not just because of his stats and ability, uh, but also his move pool. Uh, I mean, if you're familiar with Tyranitar, you know he learns basically every move in the entire game. But what makes him special in Gen 3 is how the uh, physical special split does not exist yet so all moves of a certain type are going to be considered physical or special and this also applies to hidden power the easiest way to remember this physical special split is to think the evolutions plus dragon so you think vaporeon flareon jolteon leafeon glaceon espeon umbreon and then dragons those moves are all special everything else is physical and other things just to kind of carry over for more modern gens. Uh, you can paralyze electric types. And you can use powder moves on grass types. So you can put them to bed with spore and things like that. Uh, and we are also in an old gen. So explosion is still broken. So getting back to strictly Tyranitar. Um, what Sandstorm does is it kind of uh, creates this playstyle called Toxic Sandstorm Spikes. And I know you see Skarmory on the screen. We're going to talk more about Spikes in a little bit. But Toxic Sandstorm Spikes is the primary play style where you stack a bunch of Pokemon that don't care about Spikes, spread Toxic, and don't really care about Sandstorm, and kind of deal a lot of offensive pressure while still being defensively relevant and kind of just wear down your opponent in that way. So Tyranitar, he's very good. Uh, in our draft format, one person is going to have Tyranitar. And as someone who is perfectly qualified after watching BKC and watching SPL replays, you know, I'm perfectly qualified to tell you everything you need to know about this metagame, of course. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to let Tyranitar be legal. We're going to keep everything legal. And, you know, we're going to see where it goes. Um, I truly think... Uh, our player base, everybody that's playing, we don't know this meta enough to be like, yeah, we can we can remove Tyranitar for the better. We don't know how it's going to be yet. So, you know, in situations like this, I think it's best that we kind of go at it with, you know, everything that's available and, you know, and go from there. So, Mr. Tar has lots of sets that you can use. Uh, first one I'll talk about is like a Dragon Dance set, right? Uh, Dragon Dance is a very good set. Uh, you set up, you know, you do a lot of damage. And again, you don't see any dark moves because dark is special. And Tyranitar has a very respectable special attack stat, so he can run mixed. Uh, and it very likely does. Uh, stuff run like stuff like Pursuit to trap Gengar, who we'll also talk about a little bit more. And Titar is really one of those Pokemon that uses its plentiful move pool to its advantage. So if you're someone who gets the number one overall pick, like this is probably your guy uh but if you don't want tyranitar uh you could definitely go with someone like skarmory uh a lot of people in modern uh gen 3 play actually consider skarmory to be the best pokemon in the tier and it's kind of funny because you know he's just a, he's the biggest bird he sets up spikes and he just kind of exists most of the time like his sets don't even run a damaging move uh, so what Skarmory does is he offers spikes. And 
there are no stealth rocks in Generation 3. So Pokemon that are flying type or levitate are immune to spikes, which is huge. I cannot emphasize how important the flying typing and levitate are in this generation. And Skarmory has not only spikes, but is also immune to them. So you can't just kind of whirlwind around and get passive chip on a Skarmory. You have to hit it head on. And with its phenomenal defensive typing, like Steel Flying is only weak to Fire and Electric, which are special. So Skarmory resists literally every physical type in the entire game. And it is very, very hard to break down. Uh, and you can also look and see at this set that there's no Roost. That's because Roost does not exist. So a lot of Pokemon don't have that longevity in healing, so they're going to rely a lot on Protect and Leftovers. And you think back to what I talked about in Tyranitar with how there's a lot of passive damage going on. Uh, Skarmory is able to heal in Sandstorm, while his opponent, if it's something like a Zapdos, cannot. So if it's not holding lefties, it's getting whittled down very, very quickly. And couple that with Toxic, now you have something that encapsulates that Toxic Sandstorm Spikes combo. Now looking in draft, if you have number one pick, realistically you want to take either Tyranitar or Skarmory. Uh, it's like it's kind of like deciding between Michael Jordan and LeBron as the best player of all time. Everybody has their opinions, but deep down, you know who, what your answer is, and you're going to stick to it, and nobody can judge you for it. They certainly can try, but you know that you are right in the end. So again, Skarmory is very, very good. You can't go wrong with picking him. Now, Skarm also kind of forms a defensive core with Blissey, known as Skarm Bliss. It's a very famous feared combo uh, in Pokemon competitive history and lore. Uh, this is where it started. Not Gen 2, uh, it started in Gen 3. So, Blissey is the most unkillable thing uh, in the tier. If you thought Skarmory was bad, uh, meet Blissey. Basically hardwalling every single special attacker you can run into. Uh, you get soft boiled, so you can heal even in the sandstorm metagame. You negate your leftovers, it's really not the end of the world because you have soft boiled and there aren't a lot of things that can two hit KO you. Because as we'll look into later, the move the power of moves is very low. So we don't see a lot of things like close combat, flare blitz. You know, there's no scald, we don't have the buff to knock off, there's no U-turn. So it's hard to really make damage stick on Blissey. So this is a Pokemon that if you have a high pick and you're lucky enough to get it, it certainly will treat you well. And going up against it in draft, you want to make sure that you draft a strong fighting type because, I mean, look at, look at the physical defense, you know? So Blissey has to invest in it heavily. And uh, Focus Punch is kind of like the de facto check to Blissey, so you put on a lot of offensive pressure on it, make it soft-boiled, and then you Focus Punch it. Uh, you actually see a lot of Pokemon who have bad physical attack run Focus Punch, literally to beat Blissey. Uh, Gengar being one of them, and again, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Gengar heavily uh, when we get to him. Uh, so Blissey, you really, you can't go wrong with taking this uh, for one of, you can even take this first overall and nobody would judge you. Because it's just that strong. You have powerful, you know, status moves. Thunder Wave that can't miss. Toxic. Wish Protect. Seismic Toss for consistent damage. You can actually run a Calm Mind Blissey. I know that's a, uh, a pretty common set that you see around too. So you can actually put out offensive pressure too. While nothing else can really beat you. So yeah, Blissey is very good. Can't go wrong with her. So I want to talk about Metagross. My dear friend, 12 Bricks. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with the lore, uh, Metagross, he is 12, uh, going back to an old draft team of mine. But uh, with Metagross, I can finally talk a little bit about Choice Band. I know I could have brought this up with Tyranitar because he can realistically run it too. But I, when I think Choice Band, uh, I think Metagross, just spamming Meteor Mash. And I also want to look at the item choices because you'll see where's Choice Scarf, where's Choice Specs, where's the Life Orb. They don't exist. So if you want a choice Pokemon, Choice Band is your option. Right? So if you ever want to raise your stats without a, uh, like a boosting move, something like Agility or Swords Dance, you have to rely on like stuff like Salic Berry, 
uh, lychee berry, stuff like that. So you see a lot of Pokemon not just, you know, going for damage. You see a lot of, like, Lefties is really good, of course, you know, but, like, Lumberry on, like, Dragon Dance Sweepers, you know, because there's no Life Orb to boost your damage. Uh, Lum is a very nice option in that way. Uh, plus, a little fun fact. Uh, Metagross's Choice Band Explosion can one-shot physically defensive Skarmory uh, in one hit, and I think that's hilarious. So, uh... <laughs> Yeah, Metagross isn't just a choice band or two. Uh, I can also run uh, an agility set. That's very good. So you kind of come in, you know, on something like a Blissey, you know, and you can get up an agility. And if it tries to paralyze you, you have Flumberry. And then you can hit it back with Meteor Mash. Uh, again, going off of own past draft experience uh, using Metagross. This is a really good set because it will it will catch your opponents off guard too. Where, you know, some of the easiest ways to get rid of Metagross is to revenge kill it with something faster. But when it agilities, that's not really an option. And again, there is no choice scarf. So once you hit the uh, the speed benchmark to outrun everything, you're going first. And you're hitting incredibly powerful moves. Meteor Mash is insane. Earthquake is very strong coverage. And of course, you could just delete something from the other team at any point with Explosion. Just the sheer strength of Metagross. Uh, phenomenal Pokemon. You cannot go wrong with drafting it. I know I sound like a broken record, but these first few really kind of encapsulate that. Yeah, you know, this is good. I uh, I want this, and I'm glad I have it. But even though he has this big physical attack stat, like Tyranitar, Metagross has a pretty decent special attack too. Uh, and you can run a good mix set. You can even go full in on special, although I don't really recommend it because, you know, having, like... Earthquake and Meteor Mash is super helpful. But, like, Psychic is a strong move. You know, you can run any hidden power you want. You get Ice Punch, which is a special move to hit things like Salamence, uh, Dragonite, and stuff like that. Uh, you can run HP Grass for Swampert, uh, who we're going to get to as well. Uh, you can actually Pursuit Trap uh, annoying Pokemon like Gengar, who I think it's time to... I finally talked about him because I've been kind of alluding to him for a while. Uh, so, this is Gengar, you know him, you love him, uh, and you look at his stats, and you go, yeah, that guy is gonna click Shadow Ball and he's gonna kill me. Well, the fun part about Gen 3 is Shadow Ball is unviable on Gengar because Ghost is physical. Funny enough, Gengar is a defensive Pokemon in this, in this gen. Uh, it is annoying, it spreads Will-O-Wisp damage, it uses the elemental punches and Thunderbolt for coverage, it puts you to bed with Hypnosis, uh, it gets stuff like Taunt, Sub, it's annoying. Uh, Gengar is one of those Pokemon that is very hard to get off the field because it is also so fast. So you can really customize this thing to outrun what you want it to, but then also being able to emphasize bulk. So like as you can see, defensive set, like look at this spread. Do I know what it does? No, but it looks like it's very good. You know, as complicated EV spreads uh, tend to do. It could even run a Paris Trap set. Like you think of Gengar, you don't think he could do this, but he can. Because the power level around him is lower. This is a gen where everything is a lot weaker overall. So yeah, Gengar, he's phenomenal. And um, you, again can't go wrong with picking him either and i know you saw that i had uh, giga drain and hp grass on him as options uh, i just wanted to highlight that giga drain is bad it has 8 pp and is 60 base power as opposed to modern gen where it's 75 and has more pp uh, hp grass is actually stronger and you have more pp so if you wanted to run a grass move and you don't care about your hidden power which realistically uh gengar never really does because Fire Punch, Ice Punch, those are the hidden other hidden powers you would use. So you don't even mind that, you know, you're using Grass. But again, the healing's nice. It will depend on what team you use and stuff like that. So Gengar, he's incredible. He's a great friend. Uh, and speaking of friends, uh, we're going to talk about Swampert. Uh, Swampert is... This is the best Swampert has ever been and probably will ever be. Uh, just because what he offers to the tier in terms of stability is unmatched. Uh, so 
It's a great check to Tyranitar. It's a great check to Metagross. If Metagross wants to kill it, it has to explode, which is really nice. Uh, you're immune to Sandstorm, so you can heal with lefties, which is really good. And you have such a good balanced stat line. And even the speed, you can kind of adjust your speed to outrun. Like, you can run a little bit of speed here, outrun like Skarmory, you know, without who doesn't have speed investment, stuff like that. You can really customize Swamper. He's a, there's a lot of flexibility uh, with what he can do. Uh, he always he usually runs mixed just because you know water ground coverage is phenomenal and ice beam is great to pick off dragons and stuff like that and usually you don't see swampert leave home without protect just for more additional recovery because without you know good recovery amongst all the pokemon it's easy to get worn down especially with like spikes and toxic uh swampert runs protect super well it also runs Refresh to get rid of Toxic, like I mentioned. So, Swampert, he's great. Uh, along with any of the bulky waters you want. Like, I'm not going to highlight them individually, but, like, Milotic does similar things to Swampert. Uh, while, while being a little bit bulkier and less offensively potent, you don't have that Stab Earthquake, but you do get Recover, which does have 32 PP in this gen for some reason. I don't know what they were smoking. But this has since been fixed. But Recover is insane. Milotic is very hard to kill. You're going to need a strong electric type. A, lo a strong grass type. And as we've seen, the strongest grass move we've seen has been HP Grass with 70 base power. And, you know, that's going to be tough to break down Milotic. Which is why spikes are so important. Toxic is so important. Just the passive damage to make this thing get worn down quickly so you can defeat it with your other offensive threats. Uh, so, I want to talk about Zapdos, and I also want to talk about Baton Pass, kind of in one. Uh, Zapdos, immune to spikes, is phenomenal. Its stats are great. I don't have to tell you why Zapdos is good. He's been in OU basically every single generation, because he is the GOAT. Uh, strongest Thunderbolt in the tier. Does insane damage to every non-ground type. And then you just complement it with whatever hidden power uh, you're going to need the most. In standard play, you usually see Grass for Swampert. In Draft, you'll probably see some more Ice for the people who have Dragons. Stuff like that. So you don't really see, you know, HP flying, because, again, that's physical. You can fuck around and use Drill Peck just because 90 attack is really not that bad. And especially in a Draft format, like, Zapdos, just the stat line alone is going to carry you pretty far. Uh, and he also has access to Baton Pass. Uh, so typically you think Zapdos, you know, oh, he's got U-Turn, oh, he's got Volt Switch. Uh, not right now. Those moves do not exist. So Baton Pass kind of acts as a a fake U-Turn, basically, where you get that that switch into whatever you want on a, you know, you know that your opponent's going to switch into the ground type. You want to know what it's going to be, so you Baton Pass and get more information. Because again, this is a tier where we don't have team preview. So... Whatever you throw out on lead, right, that's that's all you know. So it's the first Pokemon. You don't know what your opponent's going to have in the back, be, except we will know because it's draft. But typically, you know, you don't you won't know until you see it. Uh, so with Baton Pass, uh, Zapdos can pass agility as well as just what we call naked pass, where you just Baton Pass out. And... Um, this is the first format we've used where Baton Pass has been around. And, you know, knowing people like Brian Hep uh, that like to do funny shenanigans at all times. Uh, the player base at Smogon thinks very similarly. And Baton Pass has kind of gone through the ringer in terms of its history. So, to give you a summary of how this move works uh, in this current gen and this very complex band that is attributed to it. Um... You're only allowed to pass one stat. So, Zapdos can pass an agility. Uh, but say something like Celebi, right? I'm going to pull up Celebi. Uh, if Celebi wanted to use Baton Pass, uh, it cannot pass a Calm Mind Boost. Because that is two different stats. If that makes sense. Uh, just more in terms of... Uh, 
complex situations around it. Uh, the move Mean Look and Spider Web are banned alongside Baton Pass, and Smeargle is not allowed to use the move Baton Pass at all. Uh, that's because Smeargle... I don't have to scroll. You know what he does. He does funny things. He does whatever he wants. Uh, but, you know, he's kind of been uh, neutered a bit just because of how strong Baton Pass chains can be in the past. Uh, so, with, uh, with after talking about Zapdos, it kind of, uh, I don't need my Lodic anymore, get the, get the hell out of here. So, Zapdos rounds out what I call the Big Seven, uh, as I highlighted in the document. You're only allowed to have one of the Big Seven on your team. Uh, this is just to make sure that we don't end up with super teams. Uh, you know, taking advantage of people that don't quite understand how to draft well. Um, and this is definitely a tier where, say, if somebody were to draft Scar and Bliss, I think they would win every game, period. So we want to kind of take little preventative measures to make sure that the power level is well distributed. And we have a fun meta for us to play. And that's really the most important. We don't want a super god team with all the best Pokemon on one team to just steamroll everybody who's trying to make it work with like Walrein from UU or like Roselia, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, that's that's why we did that. So I wanna talk about uh, some other important aspects uh, of the tier. And number one is Rapid Spin. And Claydol is the best Rapid Spinner in the tier by a considerable margin at this point. Uh, one, it's immune to spikes, which is huge if you're trying to get rid of them. Being immune to them means you can come in and out a lot, which is awesome. Uh, Claydol also has Stab Psychic to uh, destroy the best spin blocker in the tier, being Gengar. Since the only way to get rid of hazards is Rapid Spin, there's no Defog. You have to Rapid Spin, and Ghost can block the move. So Claydol having that Stab Psychic to hammer... Gengar for trying to spin block is huge for getting the hazards off your field. You also have a really nice uh, stab earthquake, which is great. And a pretty great defensive stat line, too. Like, Claydol can really function and do a lot of things. That ground psychic typing is incredible. And alongside Flygon, is one of the only two Pokemon in the OU tier that resist earthquake plus rock slide which is known as edge quake or slide quake coverage, which is notoriously very difficult to switch into and deal with. So Claydol, best spinner. If you want to really snag that great hazard removal, this is a great pick. Uh, just to look at other rapid spinners real quick, that might be worth it. Starmie, Starmie is incredibly fast. Uh, as mentioned before, there is no choice scarf. So there aren't a lot of Pokemon that are going to outrun 361. So you're going to be able to creep down for whatever your opponent has as a faster Pokemon. You can get more bulk, stuff like that. Starmie offers a lot of offensive flexibility in that regard. And of course it gets recover. Uh, you, I've, been, I've notoriously said that Starmie is a bad rapid spinner in DPP. This is not DPP. This is ADV and Starmie is a great spinner. Just Claydol is a little bit better because he's immune to spikes. And you also got guys like uh, Fortress, uh, who not only have Rapid Spin, but they also he also has spikes himself and Explosion. So Fortress is a great grab in the OU tier just because it can compress so many rolls into one. The only thing that sucks is that four times weakness to fire and not having a real ability since Sturdy... Uh, doesn't work like how it does in Gen 5 on, where it's basically a free focus sash. So if you get hit with like an HP fire or fire punch, you will probably die. Uh, and that's kind of the reality of drafting quad weak Pokemon in draft, because you know your opponent is going to be ready with the four times super effective move on you. Uh, as someone who has drafted a lot of four times weak Pokemon and has watched many people do the same, Hall. Um, one strategy you can do is actually like have 
multiple different Pokemon with four times weaknesses. So take like Swampert, right? Swampert is four times weak to grass. Fury is four times weak to fire. If they don't have the appropriate coverage move, they can't run both HP grass and HP fire on the same Pokemon. So between both of them, you'll have something, you know? That's just one way to get around it. And just, you know, playing around potential hidden fires, hidden power fires and stuff like that is a skill you learn as you play more. Uh, I want to talk about Doug Trio real quick. Uh, this format has legal arena trap. Uh, we've never played around with arena trap because it is broken. However, it is legal in this tier. Uh, one, because it keeps Blissey in check. Uh, but, you know, only one person's going to have Blissey. One person is going to have Doug Trio. Um, this is another reason why being a flying type and a levitator is very important. You cannot get trapped by Doug, which is huge. So, uh, Doug Trio usually runs something like Choice Band, and he comes in on you, clicks Earthquake, and deletes you. Of course, there's ways to play around it, you know. You can draft a bunch of flying types, so you never have to worry about Doug Trio at all. Uh, one funny uh, interaction uh, with Doug Trio is actually Porygon 2. So you trade, you come in after you know Dougie gets a kill. You bring in Porygon two, and then you trace his move, and then you just delete him with Ice Beam. So you trap Doug, and it's really funny. Uh, and Porygon is a really good borderline Pokemon, uh, not just for trace. I mean, we've seen it in draft before. It's got an incredible bulk. Pure normal typing is really good when the strongest move is Focus Punch, and Focus Punch is a very skill intensive move. And then Brick Break. Brick Break is Brick Break, you know. It is what it is. But, uh, yeah. Doug Trio is going to be a very good pick as well. You're going to have to craft your team around it a little bit. Because it has no defensive profile whatsoever. It's going to do one thing, but it's going to do it well. So you have to kind of build around it. And especially with this speed tier... It's hard to catch. That's for sure. At 372, he's going to outrun basically everything in the tier and trap you and do big damage. Uh, but one Pokemon he's not going to catch is Jolteon. Jolteon is very unique uh, because he is faster than Dugtrio and is one of the few grounded mons that, it, that Doug cannot trap. Because you just click Baton Pass and you're out of there and you go into something else. Maybe even something like Porygon 2 trap the dug itself you know and then you would get rid of it or go into something that's immune to the earthquake which is coming and since dug is usually choice banded then you can make a lot of progress with it uh jolteon is just a it's another fast electric type it's very strong uh i like to consider jolteon like the middle child of Fryku and zapdos where zapdos has been historically a better pokemon but in our drafts Raikou has been dominant because usually it is in a lower tier, and this is no exception. Raikou is in borderline. Uh, this is a phenomenal pick. Uh, it, it's going to do what Jolteon wants to do, but better. But it doesn't have Baton Pass, and it gets removed by Doug Trio. But in draft, that's an issue for one week. You know, so you can't go wrong with Raikou. Uh, and moving on to more fast Pokemon. Here's Aerodactyl. Another instance of is immune to spikes. Uh, doesn't mind Sandstorm. Doesn't get trapped by Doug. It's very nice. Uh, Aerodactyl kind of does one thing. Uh, and it's be choice banded. And hit everything. Because there is nothing of importance that outruns it. I literally think it's Electrode. And that's it. So Aerodactyl is going to be going first. And he is going to be throwing off Rock Slides, Earthquakes, Double Edges, HP Flyings. And just do obscene damage. Uh, this was why when I talked about Claydol, re being resistant to uh, Rock Slide and Earthquake is a very big deal. Uh, so here's Snorlax, right? Just to kind of go from very fast to very slow. Uh, Snorlax is kind of known for his curse sweeping, you know, and then using rest and sleep talk on things like that. However, sleep talk doesn't work the way that it does now. So let me kind of break it down pretty quick. So Sleep Talk doesn't 
burn sleep turns. So let's say your Snorlax used rest on like turn three. On turn four, you use sleep talk. On turn five, you use sleep talk. If you were to then switch out Snorlax and you come back in later, you will still have to burn two more turns of sleep. So sleep talk is not great. There are instances where it can work, sure, but it's incredibly risky and it's very exploitable. Uh, and part of why I want to talk about Snorlax too is he will benefit from the lack of permanent sandstorm. With this stat line, right, Snorlax can get up his curses. He could be incredibly threatening, but he gets his lefties and he doesn't have to worry about the permanent sand, basically negating his healing. Now all of a sudden Snorlax is a lot more potent and a lot more threatening. And the same can be said to Suicune, who kind of has the same thing, setting up Call Mind instead of Curse, doing the same thing, very hard to deal with, uh, was kind of ruined by the removal of, not the removal, but like Sleep Talk working the way it does. So again, Snorlax Suicune, phenomenal Pokemon to pick. They're not in that big seven tier, but like for this draft format, I think Suicune and Snorlax are going to be incredible and you should definitely look to get one of them on your team. Uh, so real quick, I want to talk about Salamence. I want to talk about Dragonite together. Um, so just looking at numbers, right? We look here. This is Salamence's stat line. All right, we look here. This is Dragonite's stat line. Salamence is quite literally stronger and faster than Dragonite in every single way. So in normal OU play... There is no reason to use Dragonite over Salamence, since Salamence can do basically everything Dragonite wants to do, but better. Uh, it is very sad because, you know, we love Dragonite. He's the OG. I think the only difference is that Dragonite gets Focus Punch, and Salamence is stuck with uh, Brick Break for Fighting Stab. That's literally the difference. And with Intimidate, Salamence is actually bulkier than Dragonite, despite the stat line difference. But in draft, uh, Mens is going to occupy an OU slot, while Dragonite is a UUBL, where you're basically going to get a Salamence in a lower spot. For a Pokemon that has one fewer attack, less speed, but that's okay, and then pretty good special attack. So this is a Mon where you definitely, if you're looking for good value and you're not as attached to Salamence, well, like I am, then this is a great pick to have. Uh, and also, uh, Dragonite does not have Extreme Speed in Gen 3. So uh, make sure you go and you look through all the Pokemon and make sure they have the moves that you think they will. Uh, oh, and also, uh, Outrage is bad. 90 base power, 2 to 3 turns, use Dragon Claw. Every single time, use Dragon Claw. <laughs> Uh, if you're using Outrage, you are a fool, and you deserve to lose. And there also is no Draco Meteor, which is very sad, because that's my favorite move. Uh, and while on the uh, topic of moves, uh, Scizor, a fan favorite. You know, we all love Scizor. He's great. He's all, we all know him for his uh, bullet punch. There's no bullet punch. Sorry, guys. You know, maybe, you know, maybe we can U-turn, you know. Oh, there's no U-turn. You know, oh, he's got, like... You know, superpower, right? Nope, not yet. But, you know, we'll always have Technician, so maybe we can make it work with, like, Metal Claw. There's no Technician. Uh, Scizor's best bug stab is HP Bug. And if you keep scrolling through his moveset, it is barren and sad. But he does have Baton Pass. And with Baton Pass working the way it does, you could pass a Sword Stance... You can pass an agility, but not both. So you could make you could make some funny shenanigans happen with Scizor, but his move set it's just so barren, and it's very very sad. Uh, so Scizor might not be worth picking up, just because there's going to be a lot of better options, because he's really only going to do one thing, and having a a UUBL mon for our draft only being able to do one thing is not the best. You could certainly make it work, but it is going to be difficult. And uh, 
Here's Cacturn. I just want to kind of highlight that Sandvale is actually banned uh, in the tier itself because of him. Uh, so what he would do is he would run like sub leech seed protect and just bank on misses with the permanent sand. It's uh, it's stupid. He's dumb. And another victim of baton pass is actually Explode and soundproof in general. Soundproof is banned because the the easiest way to end a baton pass chain is to click roar, and roar is a sound move which Explode blocks. So as a final recipient, Explode is pretty good because you get all those boosts. You're immune to roar and everything, which is great. But the main culprit uh, is Mr. Mime. I just didn't put him on the screen because he gives me the creeps and I don't like him. Uh, but he can also keep the chain going with Calm Mind stuff. But that's not something we're going to be able to do. Uh, you can always look in Smogon archives for crazy stuff with Mr. Mime and Baton Pass chains. Uh, he is the main reason for the current state of Baton Pass. So everybody say thank you, Mr. Mime, in the comments. So that's kind of it for uh, like specific Pokemon and like concepts and stuff. Uh, I just want to talk about like certain draft trends. You know, if you're new to a drafting format, things to look at. Uh, I talk about Rapid Spin. Draft a Rapid Spinner. Um, there's no reason not to do it. If you don't, you're already at a disadvantage and it will be exploited by anybody who gets spikes. Uh, speaking of spikes, draft a spiker. Uh, you don't, doesn't mean you need to have the best one. There's plenty of good lower tier options and they're going to go quick. Fortress, I already talked about. Cloyster is a great spiker. Omastar Quillfish, you know, we don't, unfortunately don't have access to Cacturn because of his ability. Uh, and then we have like Glalie and Roselia. And if you're really desperate, you can even go with Omanite. And even then, I think Omanite is better than most of the Pokemon in NU, strictly because he gets to move spikes. Like, would you rather have spikes, or would you rather have Plusle? Everybody answer except for Brian, because we know his answer. <laughs> um, and while on the topic of Rapid Spin, spikes, and that uh, whole relationship, uh, there aren't a lot of ghost types. So if drafting a really good spinner is at the th uh, a spiker is at the top of your priority, you probably want to get one of the ghosts pretty quickly. Because again, there aren't a lot. And Shininja is going to be way too difficult to use. Because there's no Focus Sash for Wonder Guard. And you just kind of status him and he goes down. Not going to be worth it. And neither none of these guys are even worth considering. So there's really only six ghosts. Six and a half. So if you want a ghost, take it early. Uh, I talked about a little bit with Raikou and uh, Zapdos. Uh, strong electric types have historically dominated our draft formats. So you should get one and subsequently get a ground type. Preferably one that is good. So you don't really want to bank on like, oh, I'll just get Wish Cash and I'll be good. Because uh, there's a difference between Wish Cash and, you know, Swampert. Well, obviously, that's a very extreme example. But like even like Dawn Fan, who is a spinner, very good spinner. Or like Nita King with his crazy coverage. You know, I wish we could use Sand Slash, but again, Sand Veil kind of ruined everything. Uh... One day we'll have a draft format where, like, we can actually use Sand Slash well. You know, that'd be cool. And, uh, last thing I'll kind of talk about before we end it off is, uh, not just drafting your friends. I know it's very easy. I harp on Adam about this a lot, where we're just like, oh, that's an Adam Pokemon, where all of Adam's teams look very similar. It's not that it's a bad thing. It's just, you know always having the same pokemon eventually like you know people will kind of catch on to how to beat your style and everything but also like you know be like oh i hate i hate uh fortress i hate starmie i hate every pokemon that has rapid spin i don't want to take them because i don't like them if that's your reason for not taking a spinner you're being stupid <laughs> if you want to do well in the draft you know and compete and have a good time 
you have to look past just picking Pokemon you like. Of course, please do pick them. You know, it's like, if you love Charizard, take Charizard. Charizard's actually good for once. You know, like, just, you know, don't not take an important part of a complete team because you don't like it. And always try to draft different types. You don't want to stack up on it too much. Like, if you go and draft, like, six electric types and you run into the team with Dugtrio, you lose. You will lose. And that's kind of it. You know? We only have 11 draft slots. So, you gotta make them count. And you gotta do your best and build the best team you can. Uh, so, as always, if you have any questions about uh, our draft, uh, shoot me a PM. Uh, throw it in the chat. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this format goes. It's definitely our most unique experience that we've had in a long time since we've been playing a lot of DPP and modern gens and stuff. So, uh, make sure you you study up, look at all the Pokemon, you know, try to come up with some plans. Don't always wing it like the draft day, you know, walk in and be like, I don't know what I'm going to take. You know, we'll have our order beforehand, you know, we'll do a mock draft where we'll get our official order so you can kind of strategize and come up with an idea and it'll be, and it'll be good. No need to panic. We're here to have a good time. And, uh, you're probably wondering why there's so many UUBL Pokemon, uh, just before I end it and just kind of give you another history lesson. Um, so back in the, back in the day, uh, the tiers weren't always usage like they are now. Um, they were designated UBL pretty arbitrarily. And the, all the tiering decisions were kind of made on whims uh, of the people who played back in the day. And one of their main thinkings was they didn't want UU to look like OU. So that's why you see like Kadabra up here. And, you know, you see Chansey up here. So what they did was they actually banned the use of all lower tier, po like, unevolved Pokemon from being used in UU except for Scyther. Uh, don't ask why. Uh, it's kind of stupid and really dumb. But the people that play UU don't care to add those UUBL Pokemon because they enjoy the current metagame. I know it doesn't make sense from, you know, our perspective where, you know, we think that all the Pokemon should have a chance to shine in some way. But, you know, we also haven't played the tier before, so we can always talk on the hypotheticals. But, you know, uh, that's what people like to do, and that's how it is. So that's why we'll be drafting three UBLs. Uh, instead of our usual, like, one, because usually it's a pretty small tier of just bands from UU. But, uh, that is it for this breakdown. Uh, I think I kind of covered everything I wanted to. Uh, yeah. Uh, of course, always read over the rules document. Uh, reach out to me, reach out to Brian, uh, anybody who's frequently around, you know, uh, we're here to have a good time, and I think we will. Uh, have a good day. <laughs>